All right, let's go through some examples here about different things with um, cross-price elasticity. And I'm going to run through pretty quick. It's meant to be sort of like, I guess, slowed down and watched again um, to get the full effect of like the logic of what I'm, of what I'm trying to get out here. So let's look at the first one here. Um, okay, so petrol and cars. Um, so the price of petrol goes down. Uh, therefore, it's, it's, it's more affordable to drive a car. So you'd expect that the quantity demand for cars is going to go up. Personally, I feel like the quantity demand for cars is not going to go up by a whole lot because cars are so much more expensive than petrol, it's such a big decision. And so the fact that the petrol's gone down by 20%, sure, a few more cars are going to be sold, but I doubt that, 20, that there's going to be an increase in quantity demanded on the scale of 20%. So I would think that the quantity demand is going to go up, but by some less amount than 20%. So therefore, we could say that this would be an inelastic change. The quantity demanded for good A is, the percentage change quantity demanded for good A is less than the percentage change in price for good B. Um, we would interpret this, therefore, as a weak complementary product. Um, an example XED of minus 0.2, something like that. Um, these figures are all just sort of made up here, uh, just as an example. Uh, the next one is going to be coffee and tea. So let's say the price of tea changes. So tea goes down by 20%. That's going to put some people off coffee to think, oh, I'd rather have tea in the morning. But of course, a few people, myself included, are going to say, listen, I really like my coffee. Coffee is not really a substitute for tea. And so therefore, you'll see some change in the quantity demanded for coffee, but I doubt that it's going to be quite as much as the percentage change in price for tea. So I've got a smaller arrow here. This is going to be an inelastic relationship. You can describe this, therefore, as being substitutes, but weak substitutes. And again, I've said an example XED um, there at the bottom. <laughs> the next one would be, let's see, Xbox. If it changes in price by 20%, what's going to happen to the demand for Call of Duty? So let's see. They're complementary products. I'm imagining that if, the, if Xbox goes down by 20%, lots of people are going to, more people are going to buy the Xbox. Presumably, if you buy an Xbox, you're almost certainly going to buy Call of Duty because it's a very popular game. I think that actually Call of Duty is going to go up by a greater than proportional increase than 20%, which was the percent change in the price. So I would say that that's a pretty, pretty big change there. We could therefore say that they are complements, but they are strong complements with an XED figure of something like minus two. Uh, next up, if we have um, BP petrol versus Shell petrol, the price goes down for BP petrol. Um, people driving along, you know, filling up their tank of, of, of you know, of, a petrol in their car, thinking, okay, it's much cheaper to buy it here. I would imagine that Shell is going to lose a lot of business. In fact, I'd imagine they're going to lose even more business proportionally than the percentage change in the price, because essentially everybody from the Shell garage is going to switch brand loyalty, because again, petrol is petrol is petrol. I'm imagining, therefore, that there's going to be a big change in the quantity demanded for Shell petrol, which implies an elastic relationship which you could say, therefore, is going to mean a strong substitute relationship, again, for example, of positive two. The next one, ooh, let's say example of Xbox and a PlayStation. So the price changes for the Xbox, that's going to suggest that there are probably substitute goods, but unlike the petrol example, is that PlayStation is going to have some people that prefer PlayStation. It's going to have probably its host of own games and you know people who prefer PlayStation to Xbox. So even though the price has gone down for Xbox, some people are going to be tempted away from their PlayStation, but I think a lot of people are still going to buy their PlayStation. This would therefore imply an inelastic relationship, a smaller than proportional change in quantity demanded for PlayStations, which would mean, therefore, it is a weak substitute. Again, a, an example of elasticity figure of, of not 0.5. Uh, let's see, next one. Oh, yeah, so he, here's actually the, the first example sort of flipped around. If the price of cars goes down by 20%, what happens to the demand for petrol? Now, this I think is actually a bit different from, from what happened before. Um, whereas we said that I think that we, we said that they were probably weak complements before. If the price of cars goes down by 20%, more people are going to buy cars. Now, everybody who buys a car is going to be using petrol. So all of those new all of those new purchases are all going to be increasing their demand for petrol. I reckon that actually what's going to happen with petrol is that the demand for petrol is going to go up by a more than proportional increase um, compared to the 20% decrease that there was for the, for the price of cars. Therefore, we would say that 
when you start with cars being the, the price changer and petrol being the quantity demand changer, I would therefore say they are strong complements and they have a, an XCD of about 1.5. Note that that was different from the XCD that we saw if the price of petrol changes with respect to the demand for cars. Uh, let's see, next up we've got um, cars and motorcycles. If the price of cars goes down by 20%, more people are going, sorry, fewer people are going to want to buy motorcycles. But then again, is, are they really in the same market? Is everybody who's driving a motorcycle really going to be tempted over to buy a car? Doubtful. Um, so I would say that therefore it is a less than proportional change in quantity demanded for the motorcycles. Therefore it is an inelastic relationship. And if it's an inelastic relationship, it's going to mean there are weak substitutes, elasticity value of something like, I don't know, not 0.1. Uh, let's see, next up, cars and bananas. Okay, um, it's hard to come up with a story here. I don't think that there's really very much of a relationship between cars and bananas. I would argue that it's probably not much of a change. I would say that you have no relationship, so therefore the XCD is equal to zero. I'm sure you can maybe come up with some sort of explanation. You know, cars goes down, so therefore it's easier to get to the supermarket, so we buy more bananas. To me, that's a bit tenuous. I would say it's probably just like no relationship, really. Um, next up, bananas and apples. Price changes for bananas, they go down by 20%. We're thinking that they're probably substitute products, therefore. So, like, so we're going to see probably a, a percent change going down um, for the quantity demanded for apples. However, um, some people prefer apples to bananas. Some people think, okay, well, that's great. The price of bananas have gone down, but I don't really like, um, I don't like bananas. I'm an apple eater, um, I'm always going to eat apples. You get a few people switching off apples, but probably not, not the same as the proportional change in price for bananas. It is therefore inelastic, and I would therefore say a weak substitute. Again, an, a, an example XED figure. Uh, let's say this one here, bus travel versus cars. If the price of bus travel goes down by, by 20%, um, what's going to happen with cars? Well, some people might be put off buying a car, um, so we'd expect maybe some people to go down in the quantity demand for cars, but again, it's probably two separate markets, really. Um, you know, are that many people going to switch from cars to buses? Well, I'm sure that a lot of people actually drive cars for other reasons besides just to get around. And besides, there are some people who probably live in places where it's not easy to get a bus. So the fact that the price has gone down for the buses doesn't really affect them. They still buy the cars. Therefore, it is a less than proportional change in the quantity demanded for cars, and we'd say, therefore, it is an inelastic relationship. If it's an inelastic relationship, it means that these are weak substitutes. Uh, let's see, this one here, Avion and Volvic. If the price of Avion goes down by 20%, um, what's going to happen to the quantity demanded for Volvic? Well, I'd imagine that they're, they're substitute products. I reckon that actually Avion is more of a luxury product than Volvic. If the price of Avion goes down by 20%, Volvic, the people who, who, who were drinking Volvic, because maybe it's more of a value brand, are actually going to switch in droves to buy the Avion product. And so therefore, I think that there's going to be a big, big change in the quantity demanded for Volvic. A more than proportional change means it's an elastic relationship, means that it is a strong relationship, which is why I would say that these products are going to be strong substitutes in this case. Well, let's say this is our, this is our last one. Um, if we have the difference or the relationship between um, iPhones and iTunes downloads, if the price of iPhones goes down by 20%, more people are going to buy iPhones. You have to think to yourself, who of the people who buy iPhones, how many people are also then going to start downloading iTunes? I should think that most people who have an iPhone are using Apple's music service. Um, you call it iTunes downloads or, or Apple Music, whatever. The point is that more people are going to use it because pretty much everybody who has an app, who has an iPhone is going to get the music service. So therefore, I believe that they're complementary products. There's going to be a big change in the quantity demanded for the iTunes downloads or the Apple Music service, however you want to think about it. Um, it's going to be a more than proportional increase. And so therefore, we could say that these are um, elastic products and they are strong complements. You'll notice that every single one of these figures that I put as an example should hopefully match up on that number line to say that they were elastic or inelastic. So like for example, a strong complement with minus 1.5, minus 1.5 is, is farther away from zero than, than one, so therefore it is an elastic product. Um,